So we all have here that God has placed over that was given to us by His supernatural power. So what is that gift that God has given you? Aloha and welcome to Kona Faith Center's YouTube station. I'm so glad. Oh, and Rumbo, if you're on Rumbo, <laughs> and a Kona Faith Center. Um, app. Wherever you're watching, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor to share with you what the Lord has placed upon my heart. So thank you for joining us today. So my message today is these three things. And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which some like to dub the love chapter. So, but before we go to chapter 13, I want to uh, go back a little bit and look at chapter 12 because it's really a preface for what's going to come in chapter 13. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12 basically talks about the spiritual gifts of God, and he gives to everyone a gift, right? According to however he, according the gifts, he gives it to us accordingly. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but let's just move on. So in chapter 12, he talks about all the different gifts, but they all come by the same spirit, right? The spirit of God. But what I found really interesting as I was preparing 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and studying on that was that at the very end of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 31, it says this, after he you know, puts out all the gifts and go and do this, you know, and do it to the best of your ability, he says, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. Father, we lift this time unto you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just prepare our heart and our mind right now to receive forth your word, to understand what your love is and who you are, because you indeed are love. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so excited. Anyway, here we go. First Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to go through the whole verse, um, beginning in verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Noisy, noisy stuff. Don't like it. Verse 2. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, so important that we have faith. We need faith, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But but do not have love. I am nothing. Whoa. Verse 3. If I give all I possess to the poor and give my body over to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I have nothing. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. You know, love is long suffering. It endures all things without resentment, right? We might be upset at somebody, but we love them. And a perfect example of this is a parent with their child. You know, I used to get, I used to get pretty angry at my kids when they were young and do stuff that, mm, or not acceptable, but I love them nevertheless, right? And I didn't like what they did, but I love them. So that love endures all those stuff that really bothered me in the past, but without resentment. I'm not going to resent my children or a friend or a family member because of something they've done wrong to me or because I got angry. Love is long suffering. It endures all things, all things without resentment. Love is courteous. It's kind, right? It's courteous and willing to do good to and for others. Love suppresses envy. Yeah, it, it doesn't give in to jealousy or being envious of others because of their good deeds or their good, the blessings that God's given them but it suppresses envy and it allows one to celebrate the prosperity and blessings of other people. 
No matter if we wanted what they got, we can celebrate with them because we do not envy them because we have love. In verse five, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. You know, we know that forgiveness is, is huge, right? And we need to give others as Christ has forgiven us. That's what the word says, right? So we cannot keep a record of wrongs. So love honors others first and foremost. Love is not selfish. We don't love others for what they can give to us. No, we love because God loved us first. And anger cannot rest. Listen to this. Anger cannot rest where love abounds, right? We can be angry for a moment, but if God's love is in us, within us, abides in us, abounds in us, anger can't hang out there for very long. Praise the Lord. Whew, where was I? I am verse six, I think. Yep. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. Love thinks no evil and doesn't give way to revenge, right? So if we have love, the God kind of love, we won't even think about evil things and we won't give any, any place to revenge, any place to the devil because his love abides and abounds within us. True love rejoices in God's truth. I'm gonna say that again. True love rejoices in God's truth. Verse seven, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never gives up, never gives in. Love always has hope. Amen. Verse eight, love never fails. But where there, there are prophecies, they will cease. One day they will stop. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Now we all have a time where we will no longer exist, amen? And our knowledge, we know so much, but we don't know everything. We're not God. God is the one who knows everything. So when completeness comes, when we go be with Jesus, everything else disappears. Verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And that's what children do, right? But when I became a man, when I grew up, when I am no longer a child, a toddler, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Okay, that just means we don't act, we don't throw tantrums anymore, right? We don't act like little babies or kids. We are grown, we are matured in the Lord. We know right from wrong. We know when to say no and just and not just say no, 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 mine, 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 right? We're more giving and kind and loving. We learn as we become more mature, as we become men and women of God. Verse 12. For now we see only a reflection as in as in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Just meaning that even as I am fully known by Christ and who he is, and I know who he is in me, yet I don't know it all. I can't comprehend it all. But in him, I know that I am fully known. I know that I am fully loved. I know that I am fully forgiven because of who God is in my life. Verse 13. And now these three remain. Faith, which is so important. It's so important. 
because without faith, again, it's impossible to please God, right? We need to step out in faith. We need to believe by faith. We achieve his grace by faith. I'm going to say it and from verse 13 again. And now these three remain. Faith, hope. Hope is huge, right? But we need to know who our hope is in. Our hope needs to be in Jesus Christ. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. I just thank you, Father, for whoever's watching right now, Lord God, and may be feeling hopeless. Father, I pray that you instill your hope in them, that they can have the faith that they need to receive you and instill them with a new hope, the God kind of hope, not the hope that the world gives, but the hope that only you can give Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless that person, whoever may be watching. Fill them with your hope in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, hope and the third thing, three things, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest, the greatest of these is love. Without love, there's nothing. But with love, with the love of God, we as believers can move forth and reach out to those among us who are hurting, who have no hope, who have no faith, or who may be putting their faith in things that are worldly or are not true. We can point them to the right way, to the right person, saying, hey, is your hope in Jesus? You know Jesus loves you. You know what he did for me. He can do for you. He's no respecter of persons. So these three things. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest, the greatest, the greatest of these is love. And I just want to close with this, this verse in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 16. It says, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. There it is. Bam! God is love. Whoever lives in love, lives in God, and God in them. Thank you for our time together. I just want to bless you as you walk, at, walk out your love walk with the Lord. And if you need a good church and you live here on the Kona side of the Big Island or anyway on the Big Island, anywhere on the Big Island for that matter, come see us. Come see us here at Kona Faith Center. Come worship. Let us love on you with the love of God. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. The voice of the Lord is a glorious thunder. The voice of the Lord's over it.